along the Caminata headlands of eastern Gulf Coast of Louisiana are barrier islands. On the base side of these thin islands of sand are salt marshes. These are an important ecosystem with a high diversity of life, and they also provide a buffer against coastal storms. Salt marsh plant species help build and strengthen salt marshes thanks to their roots, which catch and hold sediments. The flat salt marshes around Caminata Bay stretch far, the horizon unbroken except for the occasional tree and man-made structure. Not many tall species of plants, such as our trees, can move close to the sea due to the constant salt spray. Many species of plants are not as tolerant of salt as salt marsh species, and even salt marsh species have their limits. Salt causes a pruning effect, which can result in a short stature similar to plants found above the tree line in alpine habitats. Many plants found in tidal areas of the salt marsh are halophytes, meaning they have a noticeable tolerance of salt compared to other plants. Salt marsh growth grass is a species of growth grass common in low salt marshes throughout the east coast of the United States. Their predominance in such a wide range is due to their high tolerance of salt relative to most other halophytes. A predominant species of flora in these salt marshes is the black needle rush. From a distance, these species of rush look dark, and the tips of their leaves and stems are pointy, hence the name. Marsh hay cord grass is a species of cord grass found in slightly higher areas of salt marsh. It grows in dense groves, and when bent by the wind, can give the appearance of cowlix. The black mangrove is a species of mangrove tree found in this region. Their roots help stabilize soil and themselves, as well as provide shelter for small and young fauna. Hedge bind weeds are a twining, climbing plant with white trumpet shaped flowers and heart shaped leaves. It can be differentiated from the visual similar morning glory flowers because of the stigma of hedge bind weed flowers around it. Woody glasswort is a species of succulent which can be found in especially salty parts of the salt marsh. Its fleshy stem helps it maintain water. Its leaves can be light reddish or light green in color. Older stems of an individual are often woody. Salt grass is a plant that can be seen typically growing in dense patches. It is often fed upon by migrating waterfowl. Sea purslane is a flowering succulent with fleshy, woody leaves and small, star-shaped pink, five-petaled flowers. They grow outwards and wide backs. Large leaf pennyworts are a fleshy plant with round leaves. This species has been naturalized in many areas throughout the world. Southern seaside goldenrods have stalks which can grow to be up to 2 meters tall. Along the tops of these stalks grow many small, deep yellow flowers. The dense, rich vegetation of salt marsh provides good cover and food for many species of animals. When the topography dips into salt marsh creeks, the grass cannot grow much further, leaving small, soft banks which are often flooded twice a day with salt water. The muddy banks of the salt marsh are home to the Gulf Marsh Fiddler Crab, a fiddler crab with yellowish white claws and a dark brown body. In general, male handedness in fiddler crabs is around 50 50. Salt marshes spot a wide variety of birds as well. Birds include waterfowl, such as the red breasted merkins. These water birds overwinter on the subtropical and temperate coasts of North America and move to their northern breeding grounds in the summer. White ibis wade through shallow waters, both fresh and salt water, using their long beaks to comb for food. They have white bodies and heads, and pinkish red curved with beaks and legs. They are actually born with straight beaks, and begin to curve a few weeks after they are born. Gulls are opportunistic, to say the least, and take as many chances as they can get to get something to eat. Grackles, such as boot grackles, are also common along coastlines in Louisiana. The boat-tailed grackle is an especially common grackle along coastal communities. Notable herons are common in the lower Mississippi Valley. Various species of sandpipers, including new witches, willets, and yellow legs, overwinter along the northern Gulf Coast. Beyond just sandpiper species, many migratory birds either overwinter or stop over along the marshes of the northern Gulf Coast. Protecting these marshlands means ensuring that these populations can continue their migrations for future generations. In addition to ecological benefits, salt marshes act as a buffer against oceanic storms, such as hurricanes. As temperatures increase, warmer air holds more moisture, one of many factors leading to more severe storms and hurricanes. The damage done by hurricanes is immense, 
make for a long time to reload the bigoy. By protecting and conserving these health marshes, we can help noticeably decrease the rather strong impacts of such tropical storms. 2022's Hurricane Ian alone cost just Louisiana at least $50 million. And considering that Hurricane Ian itself did not even cost Louisiana, the importance of salt marshes, both for ecosystems and for people, is ever more so clear. Yeah. Thank you for watching.